Hi, I'm Pendow, and this is a tutorial for making the hat for Dark Magician Girl. I have a separate tutorial for the wand and the full Dark Magician Girl cosplay. Chapters are timestamped below if you need them, along with all the materials. I'm mostly using foam, foam dowels, and plastic dip and acrylic paint for this. If I can find my pattern, I will also upload that, but in the meantime, let's get crafting. I've made a pattern, and this is the resulting mock-up. I'm skipping the trial and error of, you know, making the pattern, but basically I did it in small scale out of paper and then sized it up for the real thing. I'm tracing the pattern to four or five millimeter foam. If your foam is thicker than that, you might want to make the pattern a little bit bigger to account for the thickness of the foam. Don't forget to copy over the tick marks. That's going to be super important for lining up your pieces and making sure, especially that the curve is really smooth and even from both sides. This little visor part, I'm going to glue to the bottom of the base piece. And there's also these circular spiral details on the sides. I'm going to do the spiral out of something else, but the base is going to be this foam. And now to cut it all out. For the hat base, this bottom part can get a straight up and down cut, but for the sides, I'm going to cut it at a slight angle so that when the two halves come together, the seam will have a very slight peak to it. This front part of the visor is also going to get that same peak cut, but the rest of the sides can have just a normal straight up and down cut. For the circles, I'm actually going to sand the sides down anyway once I attach the spirally part, so I'm just roughly cutting them out with scissors because I work with scissors best. And it's contact cement barge glue time. Don't forget to add glue to both sides of the pieces you're attaching together and make sure you wait a couple minutes for that glue to become tacky instead of wet. It's gonna make this a lot easier to work with. And you can see here how that peak angle cut turned out. I'm gonna sand these seams later also, but it can really cut down your sanding time if you're careful to try and have the pieces line up so that the surface is flush and flat and even. I'm also making sure that I line up those tick marks well to make sure that the tension is even from both sides. Same thing for the back of this, and I also think it's easiest to work from the tip of the hat down to the bottom because you kind of need like your hands to be able to get in there and that's harder to do at the tip so do that first and then do the base and if the tip of your hat lines up a little wonky don't worry about it it's really easy to sand it into a clean point before i actually glue the visor to the base of the hat i'm going to tape it in place and outline it just to make sure that everything fits into place nicely if yours doesn't line up quite right don't worry you could just add a piece of foam to the back of the visor i don't recommend making the hat base smaller uh it's better to just make the visor part bigger unless the thing doesn't fit your head. I've marked where the visor is gonna attach to the hat base and then I'm adding that foam dowel trim to the hat base where the visor won't be. I think these are the 15 millimeter half round foam dowels from HD Foam. The dowel trim meets the visor at those circular bits so I'm just sort of marking that curve and then cutting accordingly so that it fits as flush with the circular spirals as possible. Try to glue your trim flush with the bottom of the hat base. I'm gonna sand it later but like I said, it really cuts down your sanding time if you line it up as well as you can in this phase. There are three of these like ring things, so I'm just sort of taping them in place and then marking where they're gonna go before I actually glue these pieces on. And if the seams on your hat base are a bit uneven, you're gonna wanna sand those down now before you glue on the trim, because obviously that's gonna make that way harder. I've traced an outline on where those dowels will be placed so that I know where to glue, because again, you need to glue both sides of your piece in order for it to stick properly. The most annoying part is getting these dowels to match in the back. Um, you can use masking tape to sort of hold it down in place as much as possible, but if you end up with a gap or anything like that, just use foam clay to fill it. Now I'm adding more half round dowel trim to the visor. You can use regular strips of foam and it'll still look dope, but if you can get a hold of the half round dowels, it's I, I think that the cost is worth how much it cuts down the labor and how polished it looks, but do what you gotta do. The visor has like more of a peak to it at the front, so instead of just laying the dowel across the front, I'm gonna have it cut into two pieces that meet at a point just like the visor does. For those circular spiral details, I did try using the half dowel foam to make that spiral, but in the art, there aren't as many like loops of the spiral, so I didn't end up liking that. Instead, I just used foam clay to make those like long snake guys and just swirled it around on top of the foam. 
The foam clay doesn't like to stick to EVA foam that much, but I just add a little bit of barge glue to the EVA foam and then stick the foam clay on top. And then I sanded all the edges of this so that the foam clay looks seamless with the EVA foam base. And now we can do some more sanding. My peak seam here was pretty clean, so I'm only cleaning it up like a tiny bit with the Dremel. I'm also sanding to make sure that the trim is really flush with the base. I think that this sort of takes it to the next level in terms of how polished and finished that the final prop will look. You can see here that I also didn't add trim all the way around the visor. I added gaps for the spirally bits, which I am gluing on now. I've also ended up with some gaps here because the visor is like curved, but the spirally bits weren't because I just didn't dry it on a curved surface, but I'm just going to fill in some of those gaps with foam clay. And now we can actually glue the visor to the hat base. And my trim didn't quite line up here, but I'm filling the gaps with foam clay. So I've already sealed this hat with about three layers of black spray on plastic dip, and I've done a couple layers of gray auto filler primer. Okay, and this is a mistake I made because I thought that it would be easier to paint the trim pink and then tape those parts off to paint the rest blue but of course because the trim is round the tape tends to lift off so uh taping it off became really difficult like the hat base in between the trim is flat so it's gonna be much easier to tape off so instead i'm painting the whole thing blue and then taping the blue part off and painting the trim pink. Also, make sure you spray paint at multiple angles and flip your prop over if you can. It's really easy to miss the other side of stuff and you wanna make sure you cover the whole thing in paint. And I think this looks pretty good. It's just missing a little bit of definition. So I'm adding a really small amount of black acrylic paint to this flat brush and just shading in basically all of the details. I'm going for a pretty clean look, so I don't really wanna add like weathering here or even really deep shading just enough to separate the two colors and give it a bit of contrast. If you don't have like the steadiest of hands when it comes to painting, you can also use black oil paint, which is a lot more forgiving because you can wipe it off, but it does take a few days to dry, so keep that in mind. I don't have a ton of issue with that, so I'm just using acrylic paint. And here's how it looks finished and ready to wear. It's kind of funny how much the hat disappears from the front view, but man, it looks really good from the side. Also, you can help the hat stay on by putting magnets under the like side spiral things and using a cost band under your wig or something similar. Uh, and that'll just help the whole thing stay on your head a lot better because mine kept falling off. Or you could also sew magnets into your wig, but I feel like I never put my wig on in quite the same place and I adjust stuff a lot. So let me tell you how many times my hat fell off. Of times. And that's it for this Dark Magician Girl hat tutorial. I also have a tutorial for the boots, bracers, dress, accessories, all of that, and a separate video for the wand. If you want to check those out, it's good to be back and thank you for watching. Until next time, stay crafty. Thank you so much to this month's patrons, especially my top tier patrons, RickyRod33, Mike D, Andrew Leo, Grant Valentine, Robert Reyes, Turner, Nips86, Mickle, Josh M, Schottenwolf, and Technoman. Thanks!